Hi everyone and welcome once again to Ruby's Classic Cooking and today I'm making Chippets Cherry Jewel Bars. Now I know in the States you call these chocolate morsels but here in Canada we call them chocolate chips and they're basically what you put in your chocolate chip cookies or Pole House cookies as they're known in some places in the States. I'm not sure what they call them in the UK but they're little delicious little drops of chocolate that we put in chocolate chip cookies and use for baking. Anyway, I'm going to dive right into my recipe. This is one I got from a magazine a very long time ago, like back in the 70s. Um, and it was only ever in magazines one Christmas. And it is a great recipe. It makes um, a huge pan of squares. They're delicious. And I don't know why they didn't ever rerun the recipe. This recipe is in two parts. It's a, there's a base and there's a topping. Now the base is just like a shortbread cookie on the bottom and then on the top you put red and green glacé cherries, you put chocolate chips, and you put mixed nuts on top. So you have cookies for the base, you have chocolate, you have sweet cherry, and you have nuts, roasted nuts. So what could be better? It's something for everybody and every bite is something different. All right, I'm gonna start off by doing my topping first and then I'm gonna do my base. So let's start out. Um, there's a third of a cup of brown sugar in here already. And to that I'm gonna add an egg. Now it calls for a half a teaspoon of salt, but you know what, by the time that I have put these nuts in here, I don't really feel it needs any salt, but if you wanna have a half a teaspoon of salt added to that, you go right ahead. But I omit that part. This base is quite quick and easy to make. You just mix in your egg into your brown sugar to start out with. This doesn't take very long to do. Let's see how I'm doing this here. You just get your third of a cup of brown sugar and you got your egg. You just kind of combine them here. Next up, I'm going to chop these in half. I like to cut them in half, first of all, because they go further on your... There's a cup, a cup and a half of red and green glacé cherries. And I might have been a bit generous today. Um, I put in three quarters of a cup of red ones and three quarters of a cup of green ones. So that I have a nice mixture of red and green over the top of my, of my Chip and Cherry Jewel Bars. So these are the jewels. So what I'm going to do is just cut these in half. First, because it makes them go further, and second, because I had, in all the years I've been doing this, uh, I did find one that had a pit in it, a cherry pit, which proves these are actual real cherries, I guess. But you don't want to step, you don't want anybody biting on a cherry pit. So if I cut them in half, and I'd never have to worry about that. I almost forgot to include my grandson's Lego today. There you go, I'm gonna put that down here where they can watch me baking. Like, I'd rather have you watching me baking than the Legos, but I don't have you, I have the Legos, so. Next summer, we gotta make sure that you come back to visit us again next summer, you, me and Grampy, okay? Alrighty. All right, I've got all my cherries chopped up here, and they're ready to go in the mix. Okay, well now I'm gonna measure out my one and a half cups of nuts. Don't worry, I'll have all the metric equivalents uh, written up in the recipe below when I get this up online. So if you cook metric, you'll be able to figure this out. Be able to do this recipe, actually. So a cup and a half, which is about 350 milliliters in my cup here. Or maybe a bit more if you're feeling generous. It's Christmas after all. Now, I pick the, when I'm buying mixed nuts, I buy mixed nuts that don't have peanuts in them. I prefer to buy the mixed nuts that are more of the high end. And sometimes I will try to get them without Brazil nuts because I don't really like them and they don't slice all that well. So sometimes I'll pick them out if there's too many Brazil nuts, but this year doesn't seem to be a whole lot. And now, what happens next is, I get my bowl, I move this bowl out of the way, 
and move this bowl into the shot so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I've got my brown sugar and my egg mixed up in here. And if you want to add salt, you add salt. I'm not adding any salt because I've got all these mixed nuts and they're very salty. So in they go. Chocolate chips just went in there. So now the sticky part, all these red and green chopped up cherries go in here. And then all I have to do is give this a quick stir around to make sure that everybody gets everybody gets a coating of the egg wash, the base, the egg and brown sugar base. Not that these cherries need any more sugar on them, mind you, because glacier cherries are like bags of sugar. <laughs> anyway, let's just do this over, and then I can set this aside while I do the base. This is what my squares are going to look like when they're done. They're going to be all red and green and toasted nuts and, and chocolate chip deliciousness. So, I stir this up a little bit. Make sure everything in your bowl has gotten a coating of the egg and brown sugar mixture. Because that will give it a nice caramelized glaze. Another flavor aspect of it. Which... All these beautiful chopped nuts, all these beautiful nuts. You don't have to chop up your nuts because when you get them on your squares, you're going to cut your squares and you'll cut right through the nuts. So just leave them whole. Like I said, I only chop the cherries in half because they go further and because, uh, because they go further and because I don't want to have any cherry pits. There we go. And that is what it looks like. All shiny and delicious looking. Well, maybe not so delicious because you know that's a raw egg. But once it's cooked, it will be. This makes about 70 squares. Depends on how big you cut them. But yeah, you can have up to 70 squares, which is a good big batch of squares. And once you've done the base and cooked the base, and put the topping on and cooked it, you don't have to do anything else. You wait for it to cool, and then you cut it up into squares. No icing to make, no nothing, nothing else to fuss with. It's done. So I love this recipe. It's simple and it makes a large batch. I'll be back in just a minute while I clean up some of this sticky stuff that's everywhere from those cherries. All right, I have my three quarters of a cup of butter and my one third of a cup of brown sugar. And now I'm going to take these to my stand mixer and mix them together. Then I'm going to add a cup and a quarter of flour. And that's all that goes in this base. Just those three ingredients. And here's my brown sugar and butter incorporated. And by the way, that was softened butter brought up to room temperature. I've just left it out all night just to come up to room temperature. So there you go. Nicely softened butter mixed with my brown sugar. Now in my flour is going to go in. And I think I saw some lumps in this flour today. I don't know why. It shouldn't be lumpy. I'm just going to sieve it just to make sure that it's okay. So that's something I very often do is sieve my flour, but then again, I don't usually find any lumps in it. So anyway, let's mix my flour in and then I'll um, show you what that looks like. And here's my finished dough, all butter and flour and brown sugar. And that's all that goes into my base. And now I have my favorite 15 by 10 inch Jolly Roll pan here to put this in. Because I'm going to spread this out and this is the only tedious part about doing this I have to warn you about because this takes me time. Now, the only thing that helps you is if you have warm hands and you have warm butter in your bowl. will help you a lot to do this part. And I just keep working the dough into the corners until I have the entire pan covered. And yes, it will cover the entire pan and you'll feel like this isn't going to be anything under here. But once it's baked, it puffs up a little bit and it does cover the bottom of the pan. I guarantee it, honest. I've done this for years, and even though it takes some effort on my part, which by the time I get three quarters of the way through this, I'm going, and why am I making these again? And then I smell them cooking in the oven. I taste them warm from the oven, and then I realize, yes, that's why I'm making these squares, because they're so delicious. But this is kind of a nuisance. But it's worth the effort. Like so many things that are worth the effort, it's worth the effort. So I try to spread this out a bit just to begin with. And don't waste any of this dough in your in your bowl, let me tell you. You're going to need all of it. Every speck of it. Clean it all out. 
Don't leave anything behind. There you go. Clean it out. Now I can start a bit with this spatula. It's spread around a little bit, but I have tried using a rolling pin. This dough is just too sticky for a rolling pin and it just ends up making a big blobby mess all over your rolling pin. So you just start doing this and let's get that off of here. I should have a clean knife here to do this, but I think this will do the job. It's like a rather sticky cookie dough. So. I'm delaying a little bit because I don't want to do this, but let's get on with it. My oven is heating, and by the time my oven is heated, I should have this done. So, I have nice soft butter here today. So this is going to spread pretty easily for me, which I'm grateful for because you just got to work it with the palm of your hand in all the corners and pat it down so that it's level because it will form waves and if it gets a little hole in it just patch that with your fingers patch it with another bit of dough bring it some more over and just keep working it until you have the whole pan covered I won't make you watch me do this whole thing I'll bring you back when I have it all finished and I'm ready to, uh, to see because when I have this on here this goes in the oven and it comes out of the oven and it's hot and while it's hot, that's when I put this on. So if you do this part first, make sure you have this ready to go as soon as that comes out of the oven. Because as soon as it comes out of the oven, that's what makes this part adhere to the base. If you put it on here while it's hot and you spread it out really quickly because those chocolate chips will start to melt just like that. And you don't want like chocolate layer. You want nice little chocolate chips everywhere. So you got to get it really fast. And I should say, this probably isn't one the kids should help you with. They could probably help you with this part. But when it comes to putting these on top, and they could help you with getting this part ready, but when it comes to putting those on top of the hot base, that's strictly an adult activity, okay? You don't want anybody getting burned in your kitchen. And there you have it. The base is all on. See, it covers the entire bottom, but you really have to work at it. Um, it's a bit like working with clay. <laughs> You know, that play clay you had when you were a kid? It's a bit like working with that. But you just persist and just keep, put your arm muscles into it and the palm of your hand. And it's kind of messy because you end up with your palm of your hand all kind of greasy and gross with cookie stuff. But that's part of cooking. And uh, I would say get this done first. Or if you haven't got it done first, then do that while this is in the oven. Because once this comes out, you need that right away to dump right on here. I'm going to put some heat proof stuff down here while this is in the oven and I'll show you putting it on here. Normally I just do this on top of the stove but my camera's not that movable so anyway I'll be back in about 15 minutes this this goes into a oh yes that's right I forgot to tell you this goes into a preheated 350 degree oven which is I think it's 163 degrees Celsius but I'll have all the metrics down below when I'm writing this recipe up. And then it stays in there for 15 minutes. 15 minutes till it's nice and golden brown. Then you pop that out of the oven and immediately you're dumping this on, spreading it out all over the surface of this. I like to be a bit generous with the cherries and the chocolate chips and the nuts because it makes it easier to spread it all out and not have any bald patches. That's your goal. And then every single square you cut is going to have a different, it's going to have different nuts, it's going to have different cherries. It's just going to be really pretty. And when you put it out on a plate with other cookies, they really show up nicely. I'll be back in 15 minutes, and this will be all nice and cooked and golden brown, and I'll be all ready to dump this right on it. And then you pop it back in the oven again for, let me see, an additional 20 minutes. So first 15 minutes just for the base, dump this on, then 20 minutes more in the oven for it to be fully cooked. And then they're done and you don't have to do another thing for it to them until you wait for them to cool and then cut them into squares or bars or whatever you whatever size you like I'll be back okay I think I missed the part where I missed videotaping the part where I dumped these all on here 
and I dump these out of my bowl onto my hot onto my hot base and they are ready for the oven I spread them out as quickly as I could and now they're all ready to go in the oven and I'm sorry I just noticed I wasn't taping that bit so sorry about that I'll show you be back in 20 minutes to show you what they look like spread them all out like this so you have no bald spots and just spread them around as best you can as fast as you can I have this little wooden flat thing that helps me and then as you're going press them into the base as you go and then back in the oven they go at 350 20 minutes here are the finished chip and cherry jewel bars aren't they gorgeous looking let me give a real good look at those fresh and hot out of the oven and now the hard part is I have to wait 20 minutes before I can taste any of these because they are too hot to, to do anything with right now but they smell absolutely divine if you can imagine the flavor of roasting nuts and chocolate warm chocolate along with the hot cherries hot sugar and 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 not to mention the shortbread base it is fantastic anyway I hope you enjoyed watching my video today and I hope that you will like and subscribe to my channel and I hope you'll leave some comments below I hope you'll try this recipe for Christmas this year with your family or for yourself your holiday celebration this year and I hope that you'll enjoy them a lot so give me some comments below it. So here's my grandson's Lego watching out for my, my nice hot pan of squares. Make sure nothing happens to them. I miss you, grandson. I wish you were here to try some of these squares and help me bake them today. Although I've helped with parts of them because parts of them it's not really good for a, for a child to help with. But to help with the parts you can help with and to certainly help with the eating of them. This batch of squares will probably last me a while, but I won't be surprised if I have to make another batch before Christmas. So um, I hope you enjoyed me watching me do this today. That's all for now from Ruby's Classic Cooking. Bye for now.